Hey, what's up? I'm Katie. And I'm Major. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our channel. channel. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining us. And if you're not, thank you for being part of our family. So for today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 things you need to know before getting an Australian Shepherd. As you can see, we have two amazing Australian Shepherds, but I'm really, really excited to have Major here for this video because I personally grew up showing and breeding dogs, so dogs are second nature to me. That said, Major moved in and pretty much became a dog owner for the first official time. So I'm gonna go through all the 10 things that I think are the most important to know, but he's gonna be adding some feedback. All right, let's get started. So Aussies vary in size because many Australian Shepherds are trending right now. That said, we have two standard size Australian Shepherds. They're both males, so they are going to range between 50 and 60 pounds. Gumbo is eight months old and Kobu is 10 months old, but Gumbo is actually the bigger one. He's just, he's a show dog, Kobu's a working dog, so Gumbo's thicker, he's floofier, and he's, a, he's our big teddy bear. But like I said, many Australian Shepherds are trending right now. Aussies are obviously super cute, beautiful, smart, intelligent. They like to go and do things with you. So they're very appealing to a lot of people. That said, just because a dog is smaller doesn't mean they're lower energy. So you definitely want to do your research before getting a mini Australian Shepherd if you're going that route. Personally, I had some health issues with my last mini Australian Shepherd. So I will always get standards from now on. And being a dog trainer, I also notice a lot of behavioral issues with mini Australian Shepherds. So personally, I'm a standard Aussie girl, but that is all personal preference. Number two, Aussies live about 12 to 15 years. Obviously there's exceptions, some live shorter, some live longer than that, but that's their average lifespan. Because Aussies are so high energy and so intelligent, it's very crucial that when you're making the choice to purchase an Australian Shepherd or add one to your family, that you are looking at your future goals and your five, 10, and 15 year plan to make sure that, yes, even though an Aussie might fit your lifestyle right now, are they going to five years from now, 10 years from now, and 15 years from now? One thing that I want to point out is I work from home. I have my whole dog training company out of our house. So, like Monday and Wednesday, we do day camp, which is our proper equivalent to a doggy daycare that's very structured. So our boys, like all of our dogs, are literally going for 16 hours straight twice a week in doing training, obedience, agility, walks, bike rides. And you can literally tell from like Wednesday to Sunday, they gain so much energy by Sunday because they're dying to have that full on 16 hour boot camp type day again. Have you noticed that too? I have, for sure. I feel like if you weren't a dog trainer, well, I think you would still, regardless, you would still be giving them the time of day as much as they would need, but I feel like it definitely helps out that you, you train when you train out of the house. Uh -huh. Because they're having to, you know, exert a lot of energy that they would need to, to not be... Sometimes I strong and crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> you had them down. <laughs> <laughs> That's how all my clients describe their dogs. Yeah. Yeah, Kobe's not going nowhere. He's attached to you. Yeah, he's like white on rice. Huh. So Aussies, because they were bred to herd, they were bred to be in the field for 12 to 16 hour days. They were bred to have something that they look after. So Aussies take a lot of pride in caring for things. Because they were bred to herd, Aussies tend to be very, very intelligent. Because obviously, when you need a dog that's not in tune to you and can take direction that well. You need a dog that's smart and understands what you're asking for them. So because lots of are super intelligent as well as high energy, it's very, very important that you're not just physically exercising them, you're also mentally stimulating them, as well as teaching them how to have an off switch from an early age. Puzzles, commands, things of those nature. Number four. Also, because Aussies were herding dogs, they tend to be naturally very protective and naturally vocal. So with this, we like to teach our dogs, like, hey, it's okay if you bark initially, but as soon as we say, like, thank you, or 
enough, you better be quiet because that's us saying, we heard you, thank you for alerting that something was there, but we're okay with that person or that thing. They're naturally very protective of their territory, so it's very important for you to create boundaries and <coughs> So it's a very good idea from a young age with your Aussie to teach them that you are in control of the environment, if you let people in, teaching them that expectation so they don't get overly protective and have that leading to behavioral issues. Number six, Aussies are naturally skeptical of people. So they're beautiful dogs, everyone wants to pet them. You have to say, heck no, you can't pet my dog when you're walking in Aussie. Okay, not all the time, but it's a very good idea that because Aussies are naturally skeptical of people, you socialize them right away. Now, let me be clear. You can over-socialize a dog, and I see this happen a ton with Australian Shepherds. Reason being, Aussies are naturally skeptical of people, like we just covered. So if you take your young Aussie out and are having everybody touch that puppy, the puppy might not stand up for itself when it's young, but if that is making the Aussie uncomfortable, then when they reach maturity, they might start having like reactivity issues to keep people away because they don't trust that as an owner, you're going to create the space for them to feel comfortable. So you always want to make sure you're socializing them, but in a way where they're going up to people after you say it's okay, you're not over socializing them, they're not meeting every single person they see outside. You always want them deferring to you instead of just ruling the roost when they're in. Aussies naturally are born with tails most of the time. That said, Aussies' tails are docked for working. So Aussies are naturally herding dogs or being covered. And when they are herding dogs, tails are more of like a weakness. The sheep or whatever they're herding can bite the tail stuff on it. And you don't want anything to put dogs in harm's way. So we dock their tails and that's why. It is cute because even though Jumbo doesn't have like a little tail, he wiggles his butt. He, he makes do. He makes do with what he got. He shakes what his mama gave him. Number eight. So, Aussies are not very good apartment dogs. They thrive with lots of space. You can't make anything work, so you could make an Aussie work in an apartment if you are a marathon runner or are constantly out of your house and taking your dog to work with you and everywhere with you. But you gotta wear them out and they're not going to do great in a apartment just because they're cute so you definitely want to think about your living situation and your future living situation when owning an Aussie because they're so high energy dogs do not hold on to stress so if you're not giving your dogs proper outlets for their energy they're going to find outlets and that outlet could be your Lulu leggings or slippers number nine is the difference between show Aussies and working Aussies I'm not going to go into a whole thing about this because that's going to be a video in the upcoming weeks, but we're going to talk around it a little bit. So, first things first, when you are looking for an Aussie from a breeder, you need to look and research and figure out, do you want a show Aussie or a working Aussie? And then, when you're looking at the breeders, making sure that what they're breeding for is what you want. Show Aussies are fluffy and very happy-go-lucky. They tend to be lower drive, and they just tend to be a lot more biddable than the working Aussies. Working Aussies want a job. Working Aussies want to go, go, go. Working Aussies are more intense. They're more skeptical of people from what I've seen. And yeah, working Aussies like are just a lot more serious in general. Gumbo is a show Aussie, and he's very chill, very laid back. Uh, I wouldn't say he's lazy, but he's just not as go, go, go as Kovu is. Whereas when we're outside with Kovu, who is a working Aussie, he's out there trying to like play ball and everything. He's like the fastest dude out there. Uh, he wants to like fetch the whole time. He doesn't get tired. Is their training. I work with a lot of clients. I specialize in dog psychology and behavioral modification. So I have a lot of clients come to me after they've worked with a trainer or two that are still running into issues with their Aussies, nipping or not coming when called. And the common theme I see with this is there's so many articles out there for new people getting their first dog that happens to be an Aussie that say, Aussie 
causes are emotional. You can't correct them. You want to have all the positive reinforcement training to really ensure that you guys have a very solid bond and a good relationship. And while I agree that Aussies are emotional and more intellectual than most dogs, because they're so smart and they're a herding dog and very naturally independent, as much as they're codependent, they're still independent minded, they're not going to do something 100% of the time just to please you. A good example of this is if you tell them come, yes, they'll come back, but if they learn that after you say come, if there's a really cool rabbit running around or smell that they are into, if they go chase after that, you're gonna come get them. They're not going to not come because they don't love you. They're going to not come because they know that eventually you'll get them. There's not a consequence there. So for me, I find with my Aussies, using positive reinforcement training is great, but I also use multiple different other methods of training to let them know that there's a follow through. So if I tell them place, great. They're gonna get positive reinforcement when they go to their place bed. But if they don't get, go to their place bed, I'm going to make sure they get there. I'm not going to ask them again. So if you ask them to come and they don't come all the way, don't meet them halfway, is that what you're saying? 100%. You just continue to tell them to come. Yes. and. This is a whole different training video, but you continue to tell them to come. I personally find that the e-collar, if you're doing off-leash training, is the safe, safest and most effective route, but you'll start off with like a long line or a 30 foot leash or 50 foot leash on them so that you can guarantee that they come when you call them. And then you can go to the e-collar, you can do a lot of different methods to ensure that they come and you can make them come without you having to make them that way. That was 10 things to know about Aussies. Major, is there anything you feel like we missed out on or something that you didn't know before we got these two? Oh, don't expect for an Australian Shepherd to like do Australian Shepherd things if they're not a good breed. That was really good. Well, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. And make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us something that you learned from the video, something that was very helpful for you or to you. Um, if you want us to do anything else in another video, feel free to let us know. I really, really like making the videos on the dog, so if there was anything we talked about that you want us to elaborate on, comment that down below. If there's something you feel we 